There can be no truth without controversy because engaging in controversy can promote development of an open-minded attitude of inquiry. We want to welcome you to Hope Sabbath School. Today, in a special way, we are doing a coverage from Midland High School, Kawempe, where we are having the Kawempe District Camp Meeting. We want to welcome you, have you? This is Hope Channel, Uganda. And we continue in our study in the book of Mark. And today, we are going to look at lesson number nine, which is talking about Jerusalem controversies. My name is Salongo Douglas Sentongo, and I want to welcome you, our viewer. Once again, thank you for sparing time to always wait for our program as we deliberate and as we reflect further on our discussions during the whole of this quarter. This is the book of Mark. And in a special way, as I said, that we are in Kawempe district, I'm joined by my counterparts, my fellow disciples who are on this journey of discipleship, and I'm going to request them to introduce themselves, starting with uh, my sister, Mabo. Yeah, I'm Mabo Semambo from uh, SDA Church Tula. You're welcome, Mabo. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Yes, you'll bet. And I'm Wilbert Alphonse Ngozi from Kawempe SDA. You're welcome, uh, Wilbert. And I'm Gabi Mark from SDA Church, Ket Falao. Wow, you're welcome, Mark. Thank you. What is so special about this character, Mark? Character, the, this character, actually, when I read about Mark, I, found, I find him at first he was scared to do the work of God. Yes. Then, after all, he decided to go and do the work of God. So I'm privileged to be called Mark that I can do the the work of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark, uh, for accepting that call to do the work of God. Amen. In our discussion today, we are going to look at Jesus' triumphant entry. And besides that, Jesus Christ all along has been uh, seen by the political leaders of the time as a threat to their leadership. And so we shall look at the rising hatred that he is going to face even as he enters this town called Jerusalem. And the question is, how did the leaders react when they saw this supposed king mm. to them, this supposed king entering Jerusalem? How did they react? And their reactions, Jesus Christ, how does he counteract their reactions when he decides to cleanse the temple? As well as, how does he react in spite of their failed attempts? to trap Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you again. This is Kawempe District where we are broadcasting from. And to our viewers out there, this we are going to do to be doing this throughout the whole of this camp meeting session because in our next session we shall be with our participants from Wakiso District as well as we shall climax it with participants from Kajansi. I'm going to request uh, Mark to kindly lead us in an opening prayer. Okay, let us pray. Gracious Father from heaven, we thank you for this opportunity you have given us to lead through this lesson discussion. Help us and guide us in every message we are going to deliver. We pray believing and trusting in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We've been looking at the book of Mark, and this book has had quite a number of controversies within it. Uh, Will but. What are some of the controversies that we might be looking at in our discussion today? Today we are looking at uh, the controversy about the vineyard. Okay. Looking at the ownership after the hard work, the returns, who gives the authority. We are looking at the love, Jesus walking the talk and talking the walk about love when they ask about the authority, when they doubt the authority, when the leaders begin doing things that would seem to be misleading. In the vineyard, these are controversies that really would bring things that don't come out right mm. for the people, mm. for the leaders, and they end up with love mm. being shown, mm. with Fulfillment of prophecies, which is in this lesson nine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wilbert. So each of these controversies, the set that we are going to look at, 
basically deals with our Christian living, yeah. our day-to-day -day living. These are the things that we face on a day-to-day. -day. They, they are the fundamental issues that actually guide our Christian living. And this is what we are going to look at. Do we just profess to be faithful servants or faithful disciples? Or do we actually walk the talk? Are we the sermon? Or we just talk about the sermon? These are some of the things that we are going to talk about in our deliberation today. Um, Mabel, yes. have you ever had the chance of uh, seeing what happens when the king of Uganda is actually entering one of his counties? Give us that feel and take us through what happened during Jesus' triumphant entry and why was it so important? Oh yeah, thank you so much. I, I am so happy that I've lived in this, in Buganda for a, a bit long now. I wasn't born here, but at least I've seen. And I've seen the love those people have for their king. Mm. Just that, just, um, just announcing that the, the king will be maybe visiting a county. The preparations are like two months before the day. Mm. There's that arch they put, there's preparation, there's cleaning, like there's that too much preparation. So it shows a lot of love for the king. Mm. And um, uh, in a scenario, sometime, there's a time they stopped him from going at one of the counties. Oh God, it was a mess. Mm. That shows that, yeah, there is love for the king. There is too much love now, for the king. Now, based on those preparations, yes. what can we really learn from the preparations the people in Jerusalem are doing as they prepare to welcome their king? That is uh, what we see in the book of uh, Mark chapter 11, yes. verse 1 to 11. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, before that, we remember that always, always, Jesus wanted to be down. Always. Every time he would do a miracle, he would tell someone, um, please don't say. Don't tell anyone. Just go home and do this. But shockingly, this time, Jesus is coming up. Jerusalem, people are celebrating him. People are singing Hosanna. He's actually singing Hosanna too. And really. So um, first of all, this triumph was... Um, to, show, to fulfill, first of all, the prophecies in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Mm. Uh, when we read in, um, in this KJV, KJV yes. it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt the fall of a donkey. Mm. So um, a cult, dictionary meaning a cult is a donkey that has never been used by anyone. Yeah. But we're seeing Jesus sending, sending the disciples to go and get a cult. And he told them, if mm. anyone asks you, if anyone asks you, maybe why are you taking it to something, please tell them that the Messiah has sent us for this. Mm. And yeah, when they reached there, of course, passers-by would ask, why are you taking the cold? Just a mere saying that was enough. It was miraculous, like everyday life. Even when it's this king now that we love so much. Mm. If he sends you for a car, maybe from um, one of the... Of the, of the, the carbon. Yes, of the carbon. Mm. And then you're like, the king has sent me for... Of course, no one can allow that. But now... They're sending disciples, they're just picking the cult, bringing it to him. Yes. And then they reach, and then people are putting their clothes uh, on, on, on the donkey so that the king can sit on it. Uh, Mebo, yes, you've talked about this preparation, but I want Wilbert to share with me. Uh, Wilbert, me as a Christian, who is waiting upon my king, Jesus Christ, how can I prepare for the entry? Of that king for the coming of that king what are some of the things that i have to do wow one uh when we look at the message that is going out bring the donkey and tell the owners that i am the one calling for it one is knowing who the authority is 
they know that Jesus is the authority. As Christians today or as human beings today, we should know who is in charge. Jesus is in charge. That goes for our obedience. That goes for us having respect and reverence for God. Whatever he asks, total surrender. These people are putting down what they are having as clothes, what they are having as things to cover themselves. They are putting the, the things down for the king to walk on. Then they accept and praise. Let us accept Jesus. Let us praise Jesus. Let us let him lead us. Thank you so much, Wilbert. Mark, um, Jesus Christ, he's the king at that time. And during that time, the kings actually used to walk on chariots, beautifully made chariots. The question is, why does this king, I'll use this word, go further down or stoop a little bit low and ask for a cult? Is it something that, is it ideal that as a servant leader, I should actually be humble and humble in a way, show humility in a way? Actually, this is exemplary to us, mm. the Christians. If Jesus, by his authority, he could take a cloth and he walked on the cloth, so meaning even us as Christians, we should leave a humble background, whatever, where we come from, whatever we do, all of that, mm. we should be humble as Jesus was. At this point, we see him as a king. And actually, the Bible talks of him as a king. He's coming back as a king with a, chari with a chariot, with, as he's holy. But still, it takes a donkey, a donkey. During that time, a horse was the best thing you can use to travel. Mm. For him, he asks for a donkey. Spiritually, this gives us an example. For us as, a, as spiritual, as Christians, we should live a humble background. Mm, mm. To me, that's the way I can take. Even if you are rich, take a humble background. If that richness you are can help the others to see Christ in you, mm. it is better. So Amen. that we can save more of the people to come to Christ. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. And yeah. that is where I would like to ask to look at something really final. All along, Jesus Christ has been telling his disciples, don't mention who I am. Mm. And now, with his entry as a king, he's actually professing to them that, come on, I'm coming into Jerusalem. Tell the people about who I am. Mm. The question is, why is he now divulging from the secrecy to making it known? that I am the king. Thank you. Now this is, this is, is really coming out, Zachariah 9.9. God works on his own timing. This was time for the prophecy to be fulfilled. God's timing is the right time. Jesus, who had tried to work under privacy, telling people not to speak, this time round, he's allowing them shout Hosanna. He's allowing them know that what was written, that what was in the scripture has come. So when it is God's timing, it is the right time. Yes. So it was the right time for them to yeah. declare the coming of the king. Mm. But then unfortunately, as he enters Jerusalem, he actually enters this city. And when he enters this city with all the ululations and jubilations, the Roman leaders at that time, I believe they expected him to take charge there and then. I mean, the king has come. Yeah. But he actually doesn't. The son of David, he does retreat with his disciples. Mm. And that is strange. And when he retreats, something different happens the next day. He's walking, and when he's walking, he interfaces with a fig tree. Sorry, mm. with, a, with a tree. Yes, it's a fig tree. Yes. And when Jesus comes across this fig tree, He's hungry, and when he looks at it, he doesn't, doesn't see any fruit. fruit to eat. Mark, Jesus takes an extra action which is rather awkward. He curses the fig tree. Why does he do that? Because honestly, it is not time for the fig tree to do what? Yeah. To bring fruit. Why does he curse the fig tree? Thank you very much. So here we see Jesus casting a fig tree. If we go to, into the spiritual matter of this story, when we read in Galatians 
chapter 5 verse 22 Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 I'll be reading in my bible the new King James version we find it says, yeah it says I'll read for you verse 22 yeah but the fruit of the spirit is love yes joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness yes yes so we see here we are, we ought to have fruits in our spiritual perspective every time not not putting aside this is a season where i should bring this fruit we are expected to have fruits at every moment. Mark, honestly, let us be realistic. Mm. February is the month of love. Yes. And that is when I should show love. <laughs> yeah. It is seasonal. So how can you tell me to show love in the month of, uh, uh, in the month of January when my pocket is not doing well? Is it realistic? We can. Uh, we have acts of love. Money does not determine love. Oh, okay. There are many acts of love you can do for your fellow neighbor or any friend of you. Mm -hmm. So if it's February, the month or the season of love, you act that way in that, in that February. But in January, December, you can do other things. You can help out, you can feed the, the needy. There are very many people who need something to eat. There are very many people who need something to put on. So, so you want to imply that mm, at all times I should be in position to bear fruit. To bear fruit. My bearing of fruit is not seasonal. Yeah. But it should be at all times. At all times. Okay. Something so, unique about it yes. mm. is a hungry Jesus. Mm. It's not common. A hungry Jesus. Mm -hmm. That means there is hunger in the world that is thirsting for our fruits. Okay. As Christians, this is... This is also one, one, one thing that we shouldn't jump or leave out is Jesus is human. Mm. Jesus also gets hungry. So the humanity comes out that Jesus is also human. Mm. Then Jesus is expecting of us as human beings, as Christians who have accepted Christ, to always be in season, mm. no matter what. Mm. Then the other lesson comes out, it comes out when they return, is your words, your faith, is something that God counts on. When we say with faith, it will definitely happen. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus said it with faith. Yeah, he, he said it with him. his mouth. Yes. And he said he cast it. And the next morning when they came, they realized it was really dry from the roots. Mm. And he told them, when you say it with your mouth, with faith, it will definitely happen. No. Jesus Christ is telling us to have these fruits at all times. Mm. And maybe I want to find out. After Jesus has cast this fig tree, he moves into the temple and he finds a market has been established in the temple. Mm. He's so angry because this is his father's house. And in his father's house, mm. he actually expects people to come and worship. And worship. This is a physical building mm. where they have put, uh, at most there were tools used for worship because there were sacrifices being sold from here. Mm. Why does Jesus go an extra mile in cleansing this temple and telling them this should not be a den of robbers, yes. but a wife, a, 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 a house of, of worship. worship? And how applicable is it to me as a Christian because my, my body, is the temple of God. Does my body really need cleansing? And what are some of the things that need to be cleansed in this temple? Uh, Jesus cleans the temple and our temple, that temple is our bodies. Yourself, how do you, what do you say? You might be singing all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, but you just speak, 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 but you don't do the sermons. You, you can preach and the whole church is moved, but then you do not speak, what, you do not do what you preach. Mm. Your neighbors at home, how do they feel about you? Can they even share anything with you? Are they really proud to have a neighbor like you? Look at where you work from. You're the person that, that is not even trustworthy at any moment. Mm. So that is why Jesus comes and cleanses 
and washes away all the dirt, all the robbers that were doing a lot of bad business in, mm. the, in the temple. Mm. We must be a temple of worship. Mm. We must be very exemplary to everyone, and especially to the little ones. The little ones are, are when we started psychology, they told us children have a tabura lasa, means their, 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 their brains are clean slate. So whatever you drop on, stays. You write on, stays. So, which image are you portraying as the temple of Christ? Mm. So we should invite Jesus in our lives to cleanse us and wash away whatever bad things we do. Is that the reason as to why we always say the, the, the evangelist Matov was always remind us that we should actually be the someone? Yeah, we should yeah. be the someone. We shouldn't be... We, we, when, when people look at us, mm. We should not even say anything. What we do and how we act is the sermon. Not Amen. what we normally speak and speak and speak. I can speak, but then I speak. I'm lying. I'm not saying the truth. <laughs> no. uh, people, Jesus Christ continues to say mm. in Mark chapter 11, verse 25, which was our memory text, mm. that and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive, forgive him. Yes. That your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespass. Mm. By Jesus cleansing the temple, he's actually touching, at the moment he's touching on the nerves mm. of the religious leaders of that time. Yes. Because they were the owners of the temple. And more so, possibly even the items that were brought into the temple might have been theirs. Mm. The question is, who gives Jesus the authority to do what he is doing at this particular moment? Wilbur, where is Jesus getting? I mean, who said he could do what he's doing? Where is he getting that authority? Thank you very much. Uh, that is reflected in Mark 12, 13, where we are seeing uh, these questions being set as traps. Where do you get the authority to do this? Now remember, at the entrance, they're allowing Jesus Christ to come in as the king. They even realize that he is from the lineage of David, meaning they acknowledge him as the king and savior. But when he enters and tells them this is wrong, this is, they begin asking, where does he get authority? And being the divine, now we are seeing Jesus the divine. When he was hungry, Jesus the human, now here, the divine, he understands that this is a trap. Now he tells them, asks, where did John the Baptist get the authority to baptize? Here, this was a trap that was set for him to say. Mm. But now when they realize, if they say, John the Baptist got the authority from God. Why didn't you believe in him? When they say <laughs> he was not, he was acting on his own. Yeah. They feared the people, the yeah. people who are following him, they would, why? Are we doing this? It mm. is the same thing with us. Mm. We are human beings, we are accepting Jesus, but we are still holding on unto the vices, unto stealing, unto gossiping, unto hating, prejudicing, masturbation, fornication, those sexual immoralities that you sin against yourself. You're still holding unto them, but you accepted Jesus as your savior. Let us be able to let Jesus rule and take control of the temple, which is our body, so that we can be able to know his authority that we are can we acknowledge to take lead and his spirit will guide us very well amen thank you so much mark uh, jesus seems to be refusing to give answers to these pharisees, the pharisees. and the scribes of the time yeah and uh, in mark chapter 12 we find the parable of uh, the tenant in this parable, Jesus Christ tells us about a person purchasing a piece of land. He prepares it well, plants a vineyard there. Oh, regularly we plant crops, whatever pro crops we plant. And mm. then when he does that, he actually rents out this property to tenants to use it. Now the question is, 
the religious leaders of that time, they have been posing questions to him and he doesn't have, seem to be giving them clear answers. Why does he give them this parable of the tenant? And what should we learn from it as maybe tenants or as faithful stewards at this particular moment? Uh, this parable here, Jesus is calling unto the Pharisees to leave him confounding. When we go to Jesus Christ, waiting to see the mistakes that he has, he will never answer. But Jesus comes to save. So he comes to the Pharisees, bringing, bringing the message that is divine. For them, they are waiting to see the mistakes Jesus is making. So let, let us bring this to, to, to the times of now. Many people go to church, and when they hear many preachers, many messengers, they, they leave the message aside and they quote the mistakes in the sermons that these people have preached. Yeah. Actually, some go ahead and say, I would have been a better preacher than the preacher. They quote the many scriptures. <laughs> Actually, some also quote M. G. White statements. Mm. So, to Jesus couldn't answer these, these questions because he knew he who reads the thoughts, he knows us. So he knew what they were, the, what they were bringing. So he had known he couldn't answer. So even us today, when we go to church, when we listen to the sermons be, being preached, let us get the message in the sermon. Is this message touching on me? Am I, be, am I becoming changed of what I've been doing, as my brother has been talking about, the filthy things we do? How can I change? the summons they bring to us. So Jesus here is talking to the, to the Pharisees. He wants them to get a chance of knowing that he is the king. Are we putting him as our king in our lives? Mm. That's a big, a big question for us today, even to you today. Are you taking Christ as your personal savior, not quoting his mistakes, not quoting the doctrines that are brought to us. But are you taking him as your personal savior? Are you taking him as your king, the king of your life? That is the issue that we should take on Jesus and his teachings, mm. not as the Pharisees did. Thank you so much, Mark. Mm. Uh, now, Jesus Christ is declaring to them that his authority comes from God. Mm. Now, if his authority comes from God, another question comes in. Mabel, me as a Christian, do I have an obligation in this country, Uganda? What is my earthly duty in Uganda? Um, your duties, you have a lot. First of all, you're supposed to pay taxes. Taxes to the country so that uh, the smooth running of activities in the country. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, baby, you have to be patriotic too. You have to love your country. And by the loving your country, you have to pay taxes too. Now, these Pharisees and scribes, or the religious leaders of the time, they are using another tool to trap Jesus and teach him against the government. And in doing this, they say, Jesus Christ should actually pay taxes. Is it really ideal, is it really ideal that he pays taxes? Honestly, he's the owner of everything. I mean, he has authority. Why should he be obliged to the leaders of that time? I mean, he's a king. Yeah, even when you're a king, you're supposed to pay that, you're supposed to pay that taxes. Because, uh, for example, he showed them that coin. And even when we use a coin, when we use, I don't know whose coin it is, okay. but when we look at this coin, it has the coat of arm um, and it says the Bank of Uganda. So you are supposed to pay something to the Bank of, you mm. are obligated to pay taxes to the Bank of Uganda. Mm. That is why we have the URA. It is supposed to plan for the country using the taxes you pay. We pay, okay. Yeah. 
So it is ideal that we actually peacefully subject our lives to the laws of the land. But also in that day, there is something that we shouldn't miss out actually. There should be allegiance to God. Because I don't feel it is really ideal to pay allegiance to the laws of the land when they are against the will of God. Now, these people actually bring in another question about the resurrection of the dead. Wilbert, is the doctrine of resurrection really credible? Should we really believe in it? This uh, is really reflected by Jesus mm. telling them that after three days, this is something he talks about and they think he's talking about the temple, the mighty temple that they felt was so important. There are some things that we've thought about that are very important in our lives and not understood what the Bible says, what is God saying. Mm. That is why after three days, when they were told, everyone rushed to the tomb. Yet they had been with the man, had the message, but they were trying to now prove, is it true? So it is up to us now to believe what the scriptures are saying and believe in Jesus and see the prophecies manifest. Mm. Yeah. Wow. wow. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So in this it implies that Jesus is trying to tell these people, because they, they bring him actually a scenario telling him that uh, if a man had a wife and the husband dies, then the other brothers can actually inherit the wife. And if they all die, and the six of them have actually married this particular wife, at the end of the day, when they arise, who will be the owner of this woman? Yeah. This is a very good question, which Jesus answered. Actually, for the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they thought that when they, when they die, there is marriage in heaven. <laughs> there is marriage in heaven. So that's why Jesus tells them, I'm not the God of the dead. Oh, okay. I'm not the God of the dead. So he implies that there will be resurrection. But after resurrection, we are going to heaven. In heaven, there is no marriage. No marriage. So for, for their problem was, if this one resurrects, this woman will be a woman of seven men. So <laughs> it was disturbing their minds. But what I want to say here, we mm. see actually the, the second coming is real, is reality. It will happen. Jesus is coming back again. But are we ready for his second coming? That is a very, a, a very good question for us to answer. Mm. So even the Bible says he's the God of the living. He says he will resurrect Moses, Jacob, and Abraham. Meaning our loved ones, we, are, we, are, we have lost our loved ones, but a time is coming when they wake up. Actually, the Bible says those, the dead in Christ will rise first, and they will see God, they will see Jesus first. So we have hope that Jesus is coming back, mm. and we are going to heaven. So this question, Jesus answered it in a clear way that he is coming back again and he raised the dead and they, they will be alive again and mm. we will enjoy heaven. Huh? There is no marriage in heaven. Sorry to those <laughs> who thought, yeah, I know of one religion teaches that when we reach heaven, we'll be given virgins. <laughs> not, not only one virgins, but many. But what, clearly in the Bible, the Bible says there is no marriage in heaven. So we'll be there as angels are, as we read in Mark. So that is the story that Jesus answered to these people. So we have hope Jesus is coming back. We should get ready and we should prepare. Actually, the, the best thing we should do, we should ask Jesus himself, help us prepare for his second coming. Amen. Because he knows us better. Amen. So to my friend Amina out there who lost a sister, I want to remind you that Jesus Christ at the coming of Jesus Christ. We are going to see our loved ones. And that is the hope that we as Christians do possess because we serve a living God and we know that he is surely going to bring back our loved ones alive because he is a God of the living and not a God of, a God of the dead. So far, as we've trekked in this journey, 
most of the religious leaders have actually been antagonistic against Jesus Christ. They look at him as a threat. I mean, honestly, Mark, I wouldn't love you to take me away from this set. I mean, I am the king. Yeah. Maybe there is a person who you're like, this person should not take me about, uh, away from this seat. And in servant leadership, or oh, in leadership currently, people do all sorts of things to stay in their positions. But then I see something quite funny about Jesus Christ and about a certain leader who approaches him and tells him, it is true you've been doing all these miracles and telling us all these things. But the question is, Mebo, what is the greatest commandment? Love. It's just that. Just four letter word. It is love. Mebo, I love you. Now tell me about that being a great commandment. The loving should come with actions. Okay. Yeah. And you are not only supposed to love the person who... It doesn't make sense, by the way, when you love the person that loves you back. It makes more sense when you love a person... Actually, your enemy. It, it sounds more... We will hear it more when you love your enemy. There's that maybe, one person... Maybe let us be realistic. Okay? I come across you. I take away that gadget you're holding in your hand, that expensive gadget for which you've actually spent a fortune to get. Now tell me about love. Like I'm, te I'm telling you about real love. Now this is not fantasy. Opposite is fantasy. You take it away, the love is, you let go. Love tells us to let go. It tells us to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. Like you love, your you love your neighbor like he's your second self. That person is your second self. Like you feel the same way. The same thing you'd, you'd love to happen to you is the same thing you should make sure happens to that person. People come and are inconsiderate. Someone maybe. You, you, you give someone, you lend someone money. And getting it back is, you're fighting. Like, really, I gave you my money. Like, but getting it back, I'm now the bad one. Mm. But how do you react to that? Something to just ignore mm. and let go. Mm. And God does it his way. At God's perfect timing, love will spread out. Now, you've talked about the love to my neighbor or my fellow human being. What about uh, Wilbert? What about the love for God? Wow. What is expected in me when it comes to the love of God? I'll use one word which is reverence. Reverence is the love with respect, love knowing who God is, and love that calls for your submission and total surrender to him. So by having reverence for God, we shall be showing our love because love is a verb. It is a doing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when you love, we expect you to do something. When you say, I love God, what are you doing? That is why the fruits are expected from the love that you love, God. That is why the lesson is sharing with us that that person who came to Jesus and asking for the greatest had seen Jesus feed the 5,000, had heard about what miracles Jesus was doing for the people. And now he's now asking, but I have known all these commandments, but which one is the greatest? So not only should we talk about the love, but we should be doing things that portray, that exhibit the Christianity, the love of God towards others. Thus we'll be able to win souls to Jesus. Mm, thank, thank you so much. To our viewer out there, we thank you for staying tuned to Hope Channel Uganda. And to climax it all, the fact still remains that no one can live the law of God without ministering unto others. You cannot live the life that you profess to be a Christian 
to be a loving Christian when you actually cannot minister to the others? Ministering to the sick, ministering to the poor, ministering to those in need. When we look around ourselves, there is surely a person who needs a pat on the back to be told that all is going to be well. And when I talk about all is going to be well, it doesn't end there. But I go the extra mile when I have something extra to share with him. Can I show that love to him? In so doing, I am actually loving my neighbor as well as I am loving my God with all the soul. Thank you so much, uh, my panelists today. And uh, oh, how I wish we had more time to continue with our discussion. But either way, I'm going to give each one of you a chance to send regards to a person out there and then we shall climax our discussion today. I'll start with uh, Mark. Thank you, brother. I will send my greetings to my beloved mom. She's called Mbawa Zidothe. I love you so much. And to my brothers, greetings to you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. Yes, uh, Wilbert. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, all the viewers, Jesus loves you. I send you my regards. Amen. To all the viewers. Yes, Mabel. I send greetings to my dear husband, Pastor Henry Semambo, with our children, Zora and Zoe, and then to my lovely siblings and my mom. I love you so, so much. May God bless you. Amen, amen. Maybe in a special way, I should send regards to Jada. What's her other name? Gladys Nachivuka. Gladys Nachivuka. Yeah, sure. Oh, Gladys Nachivuka. Uh, we send our regards and uh, from all of us at Hope Channel Uganda, thank you for the services you're offering, especially in the Kawempe district. I want to remind you that our next discussion, that is for Lesson 10, will be carried out with the viewers or our, camp, our campers in Wakiso district. So get ready, we shall be with you. And for lesson number 11, we shall be with the uh, campers at Kajansi, Kajansi district. So I believe uh, uh, Evangelist Matovu Godfrey, uh, we shall be having participants from Kajansi Town Church. Oh, how I look forward to that particular day. Uh, to climax it all, I'm going to request um, Mebo to kindly lead us in a closing prayer. Okay, may we pray? Mighty Father, King of Glory, thank you so much for this beautiful session we've had. Father, we've seen a lot of controversies in this ninth lesson, Father. We've seen a lot of things. We've seen you come up. May you give us that bigger that you got. May you give us that strength that you had to talk to, especially the Pharisees and the spiritual leaders who really wanted to attack you in all ways. May we do that too. May we learn from you. And finally, may we spread love to this world. And from that, when you bring back your kingdom, may we be taken to heaven with you. Continue and tabernacle with us through all and throughout the Sabbath. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. From all of us uh, here at Midland High School where we are having the Kawempe District Camp Meeting, we want to wish you a very happy Sabbath and we want to wish you a wonderful time of the Camp Meeting. May we go out as faithful stewards. And stay tuned to Hope Channel Uganda as we continue sharing hope for eternity. May God bless you.